Hey folks, it's Miss Sinclair for AP World History. Today we are starting our Unit 2 lectures. So Unit 2 for AP World is Networks of Exchange. So we're looking at the same time period, we're still looking at 1200 to 1450, but this time we are looking at how these regions are going to be connecting with each other. So we're going to start out by looking at the Silk Roads. So what are some commodities traded in the ancient world? What do you think? What are some of the things that regions will be trading with each other? Um, we are just doing some notes today, so ignore the secondary source activity. So our notes today are just 2.1, the Silk Road. So your unit objective, so this is what you will be answering on your unit cover page at the end of unit two. So unit objective, explain the similarities and differences among the various networks of exchange in the period 1200 to 1450. Today's objective, the objective we are learning um, about with um, today's lecture and the one you will be addressing in your summary is explain the causes and consequences, sorry, causes and effects of the growth of networks of exchange after 1200. So, the Silk Road. The Silk Road is not a single road. It is a series of trade routes that go over land, connecting East Asia to Central Asia and Europe. So these might be caravan trade routes. Um, these might be, um, well, I guess everyone was basically using caravans. Yeah, they're just caravan trade routes. They go across China, they go across Kazakhstan, um, they're going to connect um, sort of Persia with this trade network. Don't worry, I will show you a map. Um, but these trade routes have been around forever. Um, it's, we're just going to see that during this time period they really expand and strengthen. So we are going to see that um, the Hans are going to be the first to really explore west and make contact in this way. So we know that Chinese generals explored the West and would come in contact with nomadic groups who lived in Central Asia. And these nomadic groups would have the best horses. They would have alfalfa um, and wine grapes. They had all of these things that the Ch these Chinese generals um, had never been exposed to. So this starts a desire in China for these Western products. And we see that a group of people called the Parthians, the Parthians are going to be living in essentially Persia between, um, gosh, 250 BCE to um, 230 CE. So for about 500 years. Um, and so it's the Parthians who will really connect um, China to Rome. So we're talking like Hans, um, Parthians and Romans um, are connecting here. So this has been around for a long time. Central Asia, if you think about the geography of it, it's very flat. It ha gets little rain um, and it is not necessarily an easy place to live. You don't really have enough natural resources to um, really um, support a large population. So we are going to see that nomadic groups are really going to um, be dominant in this region. So the Silk Road will provide these pastoral nomads with animals, with protection, with resources that they cannot otherwise get being on the move in the middle of Kazakhstan. And then these pastoral nomads will be this link connecting China to Europe. So the nomadic groups really liked being self-sufficient, yet they relied on cities and these urban centers to provide them with metal, with bronze. So you have um, pastoral nomads in Central Asia on horseback, and then in sort of more of the Middle East and in the Sahara, you are going to see um, um, Arab pastoralists with camels. So the impact of the Silk Road is huge. 
Religions will diffuse via the Silk Road, including Christianity, Zoroastrianism, Buddhism, and eventually Islam. We know technology diffuses along the Silk Road's st the stirrup, which will allow you to stand in your saddle and shoot arrows. Um, chariot warfare, the idea of mounted bowmen. So all of these things are going to um, be diffused along the Silk Road. Diseases will be diffused as well. So it starts with early explorers, but you really want to think about what um, what always causes trade, what always causes contact. It's human curiosity and then a desire for goods we cannot have. So this is a mutually beneficial relationship as you um, share information, culture, language, um, and innovation. So you got to know your maps for this one. Um, so you can see the Silk Roads are really the overland trade routes. Um, Silk Roads will cause new cities to really emerge, including Samarkand, including Korkorum, including Kashgar. So without this consistent Silk Road trade, which will really expand during the Mongol period, you don't have these Central Asian cities really growing. Simultaneously, we will be talking about the Indian Ocean Maritime System. So you can see here these light blue routes um, that go around connecting, again, China, Southeast Asia, South Asia, and the Middle East and Africa. So that's it for my lecturing, but I need you to watch two videos. I want you to watch all of this crash course video on the Silk Road and all of this TED Ed video on the Silk Road. You should watch these before you finish filling out your daily cover page. It will help you fill out your boxes and it will help you fill out your summary. So remember, we're looking for dates. We're looking for places. So don't just say Asia. You're looking for individuals and or people groups, right? So um, you might include like, oh, the Parthians, Chinese, um, pastoral nomads. Um, so watch these videos before you finish filling everything out. Let's just do a couple practice questions to finish off our day. So this is the source you're going to be working with for our practice questions. The map above reflects which of the following? Which of the following factors contributed to the uh, contributed most to the sea routes depicted on the map? Based on the map and your knowledge of world history, which of the following best describes the effect of the land and sea routes depicted on the map? the land and sea routes depicted on the map were a result of the expansion of all of the following empires during the post-classical period, except, so which empire did not contribute to the expansion of these trade routes? Finally, based off your knowledge of world history, which of the following best describes a result of the increasing number of routes depicted on the map. Don't overthink these. Explain the causes and effects of the growth of networks after 1200. If you have any questions, please let me know. Have a great day.